his most played and 74% win rate is crazy for a champion that he's played 97 games of. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. But you touched on it earlier. What will our top laners cook? We're going to have a poll in chat to vote now in chat. Will it be something delicious, something bland, <laughs> or Renekton or an absolute garbage? Puke. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for this matchup, What's your vote? The, the Renekton Orange should be very, very low. No I feel like Renekton, we're safe. Exactly. Rich Rich, and Whippo, there's no way we get that matchup. Good reminder. Thank you, fam. Appreciate that. <laughs> yep. So I think it's going to be something delicious. That's my vote. All right. Well, we'll have to find out. We've been seeing some, some cool flexes. Uh, people really using a lot of different picks up there in the top lane. Uh, you know, Whippo, obviously, one of the most creative top laners. Rich has been more meta this split, but last split, obviously, developed that that reputation for being able to bring out things like the Quinn, like the Alawi in particular. So people have been kind of waiting to see, you know, when is that going to crop up this split? And even this split, while he has not played anything off meta, he has played a different champion every single game. So eventually he has to play off meta. <laughs> exactly. He can throw them all. Yeah. I like it. I like uh, it. Uh huh. Uh huh. We're following here. The the Chishana getting locked in though. Uh, definitely sh could be a flex pick. Masu has a very good Tristana. Uh, Jensen obviously very much could play that in mid lane because they've got a Maokai. Every time you see a jungle Maokai, you think, well, we need to pair that with Tristana or Jace for mid lane. So. FlyQuest probably setting up their jungle mid here, and Dignitas turn to answer. Do you want to answer jungle, or do you want to answer mid pick already for Dove? It is going to be an interesting one, right? Because, you know, traditionally, this is a pretty common mid lane pick. Jensen has not played a lot of these AD style mids, though, in his career. He did, though, with Dignitas last year, start to play some just on it. He had five games on it, so he was obviously working at trying to pick up this sort of style. He has been very heavily towards mages throughout his career. You touched on the Orianna, but that is his bread and butter. That is how he's won championships. That's how he stayed at the top of the table. So it really could be going to Masu. And even on the Maokai point, while Maokai ha is predominantly played in jungle, it is a very good support right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw, heard Ole referencing win rates and Maokai at the very top of the win rates for supports as well. So could be some extra flexibility there. Whippo definitely has had some very good and some very bad Gragas games. So hopefully he has dialed in this time around. Having a Maokai on your team to help set up some of these times makes it a bit easier. You have a lot of AOE control of the battlefield. And we'll work through the rest of these picks and bands. Jensen and Xu raised the stakes for today's match on pros last week. The careers are not that good anymore. Like, kind of like the NA and EU players, like they're like individually on par, right? So I don't <laughs> think it's worth importing the Koreans as much Whoa. as is already happening. Because it's like... I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah like, even I think energy... gaps, Jensen... Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll come back to this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Quote him, <laughs> quote him on this. This is what happened. <laughs> when we banned Porky is here... Yeah, someone yeah, someone clip this, and then when he gets solo kill, just <laughs> have this playing. <laughs> All right, we've got it's it ready. Clip. It's been good. Yeah, we've got it ready for the solo kill. Either way, Jensen mm -hmm. kills Dove, Dove kills Jensen. Uh, Rich comes down, kills Jensen, and they're all fair game here. But a little bit of context to that because oh, <laughs> oh. previous to that conversation where the clip started, you know, they were talking about uh, the level also of the imports that, yeah. that have been recently. It's not like you're not importing Faker, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Into the LCS. Exactly. And so that, that was kind of the, the point that Jensen was riding on. He felt like this class of uh, Korean imports was much easier to deal with and maybe not worth it in his eyes. Exactly, and that's that's what a lot of the conversations were coming into this split. You know, players like Dove, um, like Mask, like Castle, people are saying, you know, are these players really better than their NA you know, counterparts who are already here? You know, the debate on should you be taking, you know, homegrown talent or looking elsewhere? Well, that remains to be seen. We'll see if Jensen can prove that he is better than Dove here today against Dignitas. Yeah. There have been some plays where Castle has messed up in the LCS, but I lost a game to him last night, so I can't I can't say uh, anything okay. anymore. He's I think he's a good import. Number. Yeah, I think he's a good. <laughs> he only has to be really good to be LB too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think he's LB. Must uh, be worth the slot. <laughs> uh, uh, messing around with Masu's possible AD carries here, and they do go with the Avelios. Nice range early on, of course, with the green gun uh, to start it out, and they're going to keep that jungle slash support role kind of up in the air a little bit, although, I, again, I still assume it's going to be a jungle Maokai. And it does mean Tristana should be going mid for Jensen there, you know, with the Aphelios getting locked in. 
The poll, the results are coming in. Delicious is running away with it. So we'll see if we get something delicious oh, yeah. up in that top lane as we're waiting for those final picks. Yeah, uh, what, what will complement the Gragas? Because that is the most likely scenario yeah. is that it is Whippo Gragas. Gragas is the base, you know, yeah. it's like the rice. We need something spicy over on the other side. Otherwise you're just eating plain, plain rice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, we don't, at least fry it up or something. Yeah. What we got? Oh, oh no, oh That's no. rice and then some more rice. That's yeah, we got rice and then like bread. With maybe. A, a side of bread. <laughs> Not the most exciting. A lot meal. of carbs in this top yeah, lane we yeah, got going here. Yeah. Uh, at least it is. Maybe the builds could spice it up a little bit, you know? Honestly, it's going to be Lethality Aatrox with uh, the state of AP Gragas. <laughs> Come on. I, yeah, yeah, maybe. That could make it more spicy. I don't yeah. think he's going to do it, but it would. I, I, I do like it. I do like it. Uh, we do get a bard, so there's a, there's a little bit of possible action. Mm -hmm. Maybe the bard goes up to the top lane. Okay. And it's about how you- He gets adopted by the top laners. Exactly. It's a 2v1 lane. Okay, okay. Everybody goes up there for the grub fight. You know, they mix it around. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got some more ingredients. Okay. okay, respect. I like it. It'll be fun to see how Busio can pilot this. A lot of hype has been building around this Masu, Busio, bot lane. Double oh. most valuable prospect bot lane coming up from the NACL did amazing yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say, especially after yesterday, the confidence has to be sky high for them. Uh, it has been, so far in Super Week, two games of Varus for Masu, mm -hmm. so this is now not gonna be the, the comfort of the Varus coming through, but Aphelios, again, is one of the champions that he's put in a lot of time on. So we'll see. Up against the farming Tom Kench here, most probably. And I know that Aphelios is his most played all time. You know, people in the NACL talk about this as his signature champion from the NACL. So it should be absolute comfort. It's going to be a fun one. Really interested to see how Busio performs on the Bard. We've seen some really good Bard games this weekend, some not so good ones. Ole was smurfing on it. Core JJ had, I think, what was much more of a rough game on the Bard. So I want to see how he can coordinate with the team, how he can set up those plays. All right, chat, do you think Busio will be a Core JJ Bard or an Ole Bard? <laughs> And it's interesting how those two names have different connotations now. Ole was, was smurfing on the Bard. That's a good Bard. That's a rank one solo queue Bard. My man was talking about how in the interview, he's looking a lot at, at these solo queue win rates. He's looking at what are the OP champions in solo queue, especially with us on live patch. You got to be doing that. But we are into the first game of the day here for the final day of Super Week. Dignitas and FlyQuest looking to end their first round robin on a high note as FlyQuest trying to stay alone in first place and Dignitas obviously wanting to keep pace. There's a lot of teams in the middle there at three wins. If they could get a win here, knock down FlyQuest to peg, they'd be right in the running. And we've got some some spicy matchups, uh, not necessarily for the top lane, but mid lane, I think, is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you go with this Syndra pick into the fallen. Tristana, it puts a lot of emphasis on the Syndra positioning, especially early on when you have to deal with possibilities of flash W from Maokai, you know, you, the guaranteed route basically to allow Jensen to rocket jump on you, but also that level six kill potential with a Syndra as well as a Viego. Uh, so much damage there, so the 2v2 gets really spicy. And it's going to be really fun, you know, even just kind of as a throwback to that clip we saw from pros, you know, XE was saying, ah, well, we're going to ban out the, the Corky, the Syndra, the, or you know, sorry, yeah, the Corky, they banned the, out the Oriana and stuff, right? Like, banning out some of these more standard picks. Well, Jensen is not playing what he is known for. He is playing a different style here on the Tristana, and this is his 550th game here in the LCS. Pretty incredible. This man, you know, definitely one of the, the living legends of the league. Yeah, and he... He's in a good position to kind of rate the skill and the variability of the Korean imports that we have had. So that little clip that we had where he thinks that this year's imports are not as good as previous ones. Uh, he definitely has the games to prove it, and we'll see if he can actually have the play to prove it. I mean, not only was Jensen talking trash on pros, he also had a quote in a Travis Gafford interview. I'm just happy to have a competitive roster again, and I feel like there's hope. And he was on Dignitas <laughs> yeah. last year. That's direct shade so at Dig. That is some absolute shade. So now he feels like he has the roster. He's in first place. Can he take down his old team here? Who's going to be hungry to disprove him? Certainly are, uh, especially Exu. We highlighted him uh, being there live when Jensen was talking about it on the Pros podcast. And Exu himself currently is just doing the normal full clear from top to bottom. 
bending towards the bottom side as Jensen trying to get control of the mid wave and pushing it right back. And Axiom is one of these, these newer players coming up into the LCS, you know, trying to prove himself in a very difficult jungle cast. There are so many strong junglers in the league right now. You know, so even though Axiom is performing really well, you know, when you look at power rankings, it's tough to place him up near the top. It certainly is. And Inspired is one of those tough junglers. Uh, it's said almost every single time he's brought up, but winning MVP in both LEC and LCS, definitely a impressive feat that he's been able to do. And him coming down to meet Exu, he is behind a camp here, did not do his Gromp. The most experience of any of the small camps is the Gromp. And he's going to head over there while Exu, with the pushing bottom lane, should be able to secure that Scuttle Crab and quite possibly get the coveted devil. Scuttle crab. Looks like he should be able to. Just going to be trying to cross over through mid. Do a little bit of a drive by gank here towards Jensen, who does have a nice buffer on the rocket jump and will be able to jump to safety as the scatter of the week came through from Gub. So actually moving up towards top, has pushing lane bot, has pushing lane top. Going to be able to get an easy double scuttle here. That's the advantage they have from those pushing lanes. But there is good scaling on the FlyQuest side. There's great engage. There's lots of playmaking. So, you know, them being a little bit behind as far as the push early is not a big deal at all. All right, they counted the votes in chat. They think it's going to be an Ole Bard from Busio. Oh, okay. And honestly, after Busio yesterday, his Nautilus hitting every single hook. He was dialed in. <laughs> he was for sure dialed in. We'll see if the focus is kept up today on the Bard. Yeah, I mean, it, it's people talk a lot about, you know, oh, Nautilus hook is so wide, and it is. Uh, but, you know, you have to know exactly where to aim it to abuse that, right? The lollipopping, where you're throwing it just the right amount to the side of a tower, and it can lollipop to the back instead of actually just connecting on the turret itself. As Bubble getting pretty low here, looking for a trade with that W, but he's very low on mana. And Rich trying to hold that wave as much as he can. Masu going to get knocked up, though, and he is in trouble. He's going to get locked down. And that is a surprising first blood there. Out of nowhere, Masu does not elect to flash the W from the Tom Kench, and he pays for it. Yeah, once you get that slow on you, it's going to be really scary and very difficult. You're going to basically have to flash to be able to dodge the Tom Kench W. He does not do it. It's kind of interesting, too, because a lot of people in this discussion of all the exciting rookies in the league right now, uh, with Masu included, really were hoping and, and wished that like XU and Isles, some of these players that have had some games, just enough to like disqualify them from uh, actual eligibility for being rookie of the year. I uh, feel like they should be in the conversation and there it is again. Yeah, slow is on him, doesn't flash it, tries to just go with the ghost and Isles got him with the edge of the Abyssal Voyage. Nice flash there, reacting to the gank coming in as Jensen. A little bit of anti-timing, jumps in aggressive. You want to find those windows to rocket jump in these matchups on Tristana to go in aggressive, but Xu was there. Ends up being that trade of flashes. Mid lane, though, going very even. And Masu back on the map here quicker with the white red. They're going to be able to chop down this dragon here pretty quick. So it is first blood over to Dig, but FlyQuest get their dragon. Very interested to see if Dignitas will coordinate a repeat gank on Jensen now that he has no flash and Syndra is level six with that ulti we we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That definitely is the burst window, is the damage uh, that you need if you're going to actually make him eat his words. Yeah, and I, I think it'll be interesting, right? Because there's not that guaranteed lockdown. You can look for the scatter, but you can always buffer that rocket jump on it as Masu under a little bit of pressure here, but it's far enough back towards the tower, they should be fine. So, you know, it might even require, you know, an extra member coming there as Isles just using this dive pretty aggressively, jumping forward. Busio's trying to wrap around, but Exu is here as well. So he's gonna have to portal to safety. Yeah, portal right back out. And they get the wave pushed in. Dragon was, of course, picked up already by FlyQuest. So even though Dignitas have this nice gold lead for themselves in the early stages, that FlyQuest team that you pointed out does have some scaling options for themselves will be pretty happy with the double call with the dragon for themselves early on um and whippo is starting a decent amount of ap here with a blasting one already um they're gonna have some diversification in their damage types it's not just the double ad carries yeah i'm gonna be interested to see where he actually goes with this um i've been seeing more and more people really liking the leandry's build it Busio, though, in some trouble now. He's going to get gobbled up by Isles, and that's another easy kill. Well. As Tomo going to grab it. Dignitas' bot lane crushing here in the first seven minutes. And this Tomo Isles bottom lane was one at the beginning of the season where everyone was complimenting them for how much they grinded Champions Q, how many games they were putting in. 
They were both at the top of the ladder in Champs Q in the beginning of preseason, you know, where that was the only place you could play the new patch. They were just grinding away, really putting in that work, putting in that effort. And for them now to be the ones getting multiple kills on this FlyQuest bottom lane, who just yesterday were double killing Cloud9 over and over back to back plays. This seems like it, it really has been kind of true what the teams and the players have been alluding to where anyone really can and has a good chance at beating any of the other teams and the scrims have been all over the place. Exactly, you cannot look past any of these players and it feels like, I almost wanna say, like casual deaths down that bot lane. Like it didn't feel like it was yeah. anything that surprising. You're just kind of underestimating the damage, maybe disrespecting the players saying, ah, they're not going to kill me here. You know, not committing the flashes in either case, both Masu and Busio die without flashing. Um, you know, maybe playing this game a little bit too cool, a little bit too... Uh... <laughs> I would say for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can uh, hold on to that flash way too long. And uh, giving up those kills to Senna and to Tom Kench. Definitely can come to regret those. This gold lead continues to increase for Dignitas. Yep, we do have level six now for Busio, so playmaking tools unlocked for him as he could look for those ultis to try to set up plays. But of course, Senna TK is quite a safe lane and Inspired's just been kind of relegated to power farming because his lanes have been getting pushed in. We can see Busio is moving around on the map is over towards mid lane there and potentially going to head up towards top. We'll see if he can find an angle to get something done here. As Whippo just constantly trading and he's going to be going for the Roa build. This is another one I've been seeing more from Gragas top. This is kind of an old school build as well. Back in the day before Roa got removed, um, some Gragas's would go for those styles of builds. Dove though, going to be forced to flash as Busio gets close with the Swifty Boots before using that Tempered Fate. And if you are really close like that and just throw it right on their target, they have to flash. They cannot get out of range. And it gets really dangerous for him now. Dove here on the center with no flash has no escapes and Maokai ultimate is very difficult for him to get away from. XU is going to be in a bit yeah, of a 2 one XU obviously starting to scrap there. And Busio will just be able to walk it out, but it does mean Inspire gonna have to drop the ulti. Jensen though potentially in some trouble, will have to retreat. The rocket jump is available and it's gonna be able to hop out to safety. Keep himself in not too much danger. I love this stuff from, from Exu though. He's being so aggressive and he plays off of that winning bottom lane that's consistently getting these kills uh, to go invade the jungle and take away one of the points I was just trying to make of Maokai, you know, ultimate being threatening for the Cinder with no flash. Guess what? Because Exu goes in there, he starts the duel and his, his bottom lane that's been winning is able to come up uh, and back him up in that invade, they get a very meaningful cooldown for it. Absolutely, I mean, it's just smart positioning, right? You know the Bard is gonna be walking back towards bot lane. He doesn't walk a safer route. So you lay in wait there. There's very little risk to what XU is doing. And he does end up forcing out some cooldowns. Now, Masu gonna pop the ghost here, looking for Isles. See if he can chase him down. The binding doesn't quite connect there from Busio, so they're gonna try to turn it on to Tomo, who's taking a lot of damage here, but a great ulti comes out from Isles, pulling Tomo to safety from that ulti that was popping out there from Masu. The dragon is now spawned. Jungler's moving back out on the map. And it is gonna be FlyQuest having to reset, which could potentially give Dignitas an opportunity to look for this dragon. And you can see the dove was cheating down towards it. Yeah, I wonder, with no Senna ult and no Tom Kench ult, a little bit of a reward here for Masu using his ghost going super aggressive. After they get the reset too, heading on down, Inspired is going to arrive. I don't know, Masu's pretty far away, but they're poking around. Yeah, they're trying to get in range, see if there's any opportunity for a steal here, but it might be a one-way trip if they go for it. Jensen though, trying to get Pryo and Inspired's gonna pop the ult, he's gonna flash in, but it's Tom Kench of everyone who connects that last hit on it. XU, the binding not gonna connect on him and it will just dissipate. Yeah, that was really close. Uh, all the time here with Maokai and with Rel, you know, these champions that have one ability that does so much damage to jungle monsters. He tries to go with the Q flash in here and just time it with his smite. It got down to, I believe I saw 33 yeah, health. Yeah, really close. And so Tom Kench there, Isles, who was just out autoing that dragon, um, or maybe it was even a tongue lash, is able to get it at the 33 oh, HP. Oh, Whippo maybe in some trouble in top lane though, as the world ender is gonna get popped. We'll see if Whippo can find the disengage. He's in trouble here, but Jensen comes up. It's a flash out for Whippo. Jensen gonna be able to go in. We'll see if the binding can land. Can he get it through the minion? No, he cannot. He was too far away. Whippo's still in trouble. Is the body slam back as Dove has come? The Grubs are angry, they are <laughs> aggroed, and Dignitas is gonna take the leash. The story of Whippo and the Grubs this weekend. <laughs> They're hunting him. <laughs> it's been a long one. That one, uh, they let him out the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they let him off this time around, not gonna yeah. chase him around the map. 
and they'll just give their lives Sleep over with one to, eye open, Whippo. Yeah, they'll give their lives over to, to Dig this time. And remember, they got the first three as well. So Exu able to pick five up already. number five already, and they're looking for number six. He already used his smite on one of the earlier ones, but nobody's coming around. So it should be a full six. Yeah. The whole set here for Dignitas which will greatly improve their tower damage. They don't have a lot of split pushing. Uh, it's basically just the Aatrox that's going to be a lot more side laning. Syndra is one of the mid lane mages that's a lot more dangerous for them to go out in side lanes later on. So we'll see how much reward Rich can get with it. Can definitely help you even in those kind of siege situations though, where you're both playing two, three members mid, you just keep spawning some void mites, chip away at that turret really slowly. And even punish people after you get a team fight victory, sometimes totally. you get a lot more that way. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I mean, it can turn a lot of champions that aren't even good inside lanes you know, into a little bit of a tower threat. You know, if you leave Tom Kench alone, all of a sudden those void mites can really accelerate the damage you're gonna get. You know, maybe you get a little bit more chip than you would have otherwise. Uh, but so far, relatively close game here. 1k gold lead for Ding Toss the Grubs is their main advantage. XU, though, coming up towards top lane. Whippo may have to use the ulti for disengage, but Inspired is coming as well. There's the ulti out from Whippo. XU's gonna ult back in. Inspired here to peel. Not gonna be able to commit to this fight. Too healthy over on the Ding Toss side, but Inspired is there to cover. And that feels like that's been his role so far this game. He's not really able to look for the aggressive plays. He's just trying to bodyguard for the squad, keep them safe. Yeah, trying to do a little bit of denial. A lot of these moves have been started by Exu, and yeah. that's why it's always kind of a cover here for the Maokai. Of course, the champion is kind of good at those those trailing plays where he's coming from jungle, has the long range ulti, but Exu remains proactive here. And this is something that Dignitas themselves, when you talk to the coaching staff at the beginning of the year, they're very excited because last year, Exu spent so much time watching Dig games with the coaching staff mm -hmm. in their room and discussing uh, you know, the early game, especially strategy for the game, and uh, really has a very similar view to those coaches. And they felt like he was going to be one of the ones that would implement that in game on stage for them. And definitely has paid off thus far in the early stages. FlyQuest, of course, battling a bit back and taking some of that, retaking some of that gold. Yep, absolutely. And I think they're going to be feeling pretty good about the fact that they're not too far behind because they do have a really strong 5v5 comp. They scale quite well here as well. And we're seeing kind of this new age tank build of just Bomby into Frozen Heart and likely just Kanan coming up next for Inspired. That's kind of the big three as Dignitas potentially looking for a fight here. Busio may be in some trouble. He is kind of caught out of position here. Could get gobbled up. But on the other end, the TP is going to come in. Masu trying to work down this front line, but it's Busio who's going to go down. And now it's Whippo on the run. Can he get to the Blast Cone? Let's find out. He is going to be able to Blast Cone over the wall, but in comes Rich, and Rich has the World Ender active, and there's no way out for Whippo. 4-0 for Dignitas. And Isles is just stomping on them with this Tom Kench. You mentioned it. He gobbles up Busio. Bard can't even get away from him. He follows that magical journey, short as it is, right over the edge, and they're able to get the chase down. They retain control of Summoner's Rift. They even have Dove teleport to topside so they can push all three lanes afterwards. Yeah, FlyQuest not very organized on that play, you have to say, you know, coming in from different angles, didn't feel like they were all on the same page, but Busio, maybe gonna be spawning out XU here. And kind of mentioned as well earlier that after winning one of those team fights, sometimes the Grubs will allow you to take even more, them splitting out to the into the three lanes, getting those Grub and Might damage windows onto all three of the outer towers. Dove now rotating back towards mid so they can kind of finish up with this one. There's no way Masu wants to stick around. You've got no wave clear there. Oh, Bottom side though, Rich. Now. Jensen gonna be jumping in. Inspired is here. The Ignite is down and Rich is gonna be going down in a hurry. They give it over to Jensen, injecting some gold in, but they have the Herald mid. They're gonna get a charge. That's two towers that are for sure going down. And we'll see how quickly FlyQuest can get back to defend this because it might be another charge coming in from the Herald. And look at all those Void Mites. Definitely going to get that next charge coming through. So half the HP off the Inhib Tower as well. And then they make the call. Keep Whippo topside, even though he doesn't have teleport. FlyQuest, they got the kill onto Rich. So even though Whippo is up there, whoa, teleport down to the bottom tower, whereas Jensen is almost going to finish it off. Yeah, it could be a fight here. Busio connects on XU, but will he have the damage to follow it up? The Binding is there. Inspired is here, and in comes Masu. XU in trouble now, trying to get to the wall. Star Breaker over, and he does, but he goes down anyway. Another kill going to one of the AD carries on FlyQuest. As Busio now on the run, the Tongue Lash connects for Miles. 
Masu trying to escort him out as it's inspired hitting the dragon, but his team is fighting at the same time and no one is helping him. They gotta turn on this fight. You can't be staying split like this, but it's Tomo in trouble now. Great gobble up there for Miles. It's gonna keep him safe and the world ender is popped by Rich. But it's Jensen in the back line. It's Busio portaling out and Jensen's going <laughs> forward now. But look at the stun is gonna be available there on Jensen. A great buster shot pushes Rich back and the world ender expires. The kill comes in onto Tomo and now Rich trying to get out of there will be able to limp out of this fight. But Inspired on the other side gets the dragon. What a scrappy performance there from FlyQuest. Many little outplays leading to a great result. All right, that was chaos. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the Tom Kench teleport to bottom lane where the tower was one hit away from dying from a Tristana right in front like of that? it, though. I, that, that to like me, that? <laughs> I, I feel like I need to review it. I, we need to do like a live VOD review, slow this down, yeah. and, and maybe- Basically, my top lane was cooking, didn't really like it. You how does this TP taste, Kobe? This this tastes like some expired milk. Oh, that's terrible. Because look at this. It forces the rest of them to completely lose numbers up by the dragon. Then Exu just gets slammed into it, and he's forced to try and escape. Ults over, he still dies. And in a scenario where Dignitas were, kind, were set up with a much better look, now they're at a numbers disadvantage with no jungler. And so when Masu moves up and he's putting all this damage into to Tomo, it, it forces this, this dig line to fold in on itself, allowing Jensen, who was chasing the Aatrox, to come over. And they had just enough damage with Whippo's ultimate getting him low enough for the explosive shot of Jensen to actually finish off the kill. Yeah, that that one is definitely a, a coordination issue yeah. on that on the uh, on the call there. You can see XU not not very happy with it. And a frustrating fight, I think, for Rich, you know, really getting kited out there as Busio may just go goodbye. Nice little sidestep on the initial play there, though. Rich coming forward. Jensen gonna have to flash out, but it's Isles in trouble in mid lane. The ulti comes through from Tomo, but it's not gonna be enough, I don't think, to keep him alive, or is it? As he's able to dive out and flash away. Does survive on both sides. No one loses anybody, but yeah, back to that previous fight. I mean, the buster shot on Rich as he was trying to E in onto Jensen. Also, as he goes for the Q flash onto Busio, he was able to portal to safety. You know, just narrowly missing those kills that would have been resets for the World Ender yeah. and could have really changed things. Yeah, Rich was so close to being able to kind of snowball there, but now they're living in a game where they've completely lost their gold lead to FlyQuest and FlyQuest got the dragon on top of it. So they're the ones stacking now. And you're facing this double 80 carry scaling composition where Jensen, who you mentioned in Champion Select, had put his time learning the Tristana in while he was on Dignitas, and now he's using it it's against, against them. them. Oh, the deep water dive not quite in time to knock Masu up there. Would have been close. But he's at two items now with the mm -hmm. quick, quick blades finished as well. So this Tristana damage gets pretty scary. Yeah, but Bo should be able to walk this one out. Exu is here. The body slam misses. Dove still holding that ulti, though. And there's a flash in from Exu with the stun. The Heartbreaker comes in. The heal from the passive, not enough to keep Whippo alive. As he's going to go down, Dignitas finding another kill there. Whippo felt confident they could have just walked that one out, but ends up punishing. Yeah, Exu again, still just so active here on the Viego. Creates another opening for Dignitas. Battling right back. This is such a close, such a tight game here. And this is something I'll give Exu a lot of credit for. You know, even in the games that have not gone well for him, he has not shied away from making plays, right? He is determined to be continuing to play aggressive. You know, whether it's going well, whether it's not going well, he's going to keep looking for those plays. And Dignitas is not a team this split that will go down without a fight. Even if they get behind, they'll keep looking for those aggressive moves. Yeah. A lot of fight left in them here. And they very shortly take a small gold lead. I mean, this thing, this bit is basically non-existent yeah. because gold leads are just a way to tell you who probably is going to have more items. And guess what? <laughs> the items are basically even Items here. tell you that too. Yeah, items are going to tell you that even better. I guess one of the interesting things is that Frozen Heart is so cheap mm. that you're seeing things where like Quippo has a completed 10 stack rod of ages in addition to his Frozen Heart. So they've got double Frozen Hearts for big AOE for the coverage um, you know, of that aura. And you get the extra level and the full scaling of the 
uh, Rod of Ages start for him. I will say also a little bit surprised by the Mikhail's rush here from Lucio. I think that Mikhail's rush is really strong on this patch and in this season in general against a lot of champions, but I don't see a lot of those champions that I would think Mikhail's rush, you know, over on the other side. There's Scatter of the Week, you can Mikhail's, you can Mikhail's, you know, a center route, a Tom Kench stun on the Q if you get the sacks and then stun, but there's not really amazing things to Mikhail's. Yeah, so it's I, a bit surprising. I guess he's just so scared of the Syndra plus Viego bursting somebody and killing them. Like those two champions um, trying to save Masu's life most probably as he is the one that's going to have to be most worried about his positioning. Yeah, looking for the fight here. The ulti comes in, but it's a bit of a mistiming there as there's not going to be a follow-up binding Isles. Potentially can just walk this out, but there's the ulti from Inspire. Going to connect on XU. XU, though, gets gobbled up by Isles, and Isles is on the run. Now the TP coming in here from Whippo as he's going to join the team. The World Ender has already been popped by Rich, but it will expire now as FlyQuest, I think, have gotten themselves into a pretty decent spot here, but with Dove arriving as well, we'll see how they want to fight this one out. XU moving up. Busio trying to find an angle on the side here, but with no Bard ultimate, it could be tough. Yeah, look at Whippo then, because Whippo's ultimate is ready. He's got Flash ready on the Gragas. This is like dream playmaking opportunity, and they go top. Yeah, Jensen's going in onto Rich. Not going to be able to get the reset, but they do force the Flash. Inspired, though, trying to go forward, trying to get in range, as Masu's going to have to Flash out of there. There's the Heartbreaker from XU. XU trying to finish it off, but Masu is kiting out. Masu is still alive, and on the other side, it's Jensen taking over the fight and just on it, going crazy, showing who the better mid laner is in this one, and it's Jensen with the triple, it's Jensen with the quadra, and it is FlyQuest marching on the Baron. Jensen said the Korean imports are overrated and overused this split, and he's 6-0, so I guess you can't say anything. That quote tasted pretty good. <laughs> tasted pretty good, and FlyQuest, our number one team in the LCS, move right over to Baron. Clean ace for them. They kept Masu alive. Wow. Amazing stuff here. I mean, e even the tiny bit of Mikhail's there, that little bit of extra health in the end did make it for them. I thought Whippo as well over the wall after they pushed out Rich and, and Rich already had no World Ender from yeah. the earlier exchange. It, it felt like from the very beginning, FlyQuest got so many little advantages that then the execution of the end of the team fight was, was super easy for them. Here's a look at the start. Uh, and in this one, I'm looking at Jensen because the Chasana is doing a lot of damage and then he rocket jumps just out as Rich comes over and XU tries to stun him. So they get their chunk, they kite out the rest of the world ender here, they wait for the dragon, they reset it a little bit, and then they section off the fight where you have Whipple up on the top side, marking Rich, Jensen's gonna make another move on this Tristana to push him out. The rocket jump over the side, now he's got no flash or anything, and they basically re-enter the fight. Even though the blast cone put Jensen further away for the start of it, he does come in so big. He kills Rich over the wall, basically, you mentioned Masu escaping on the side there. Actually, you couldn't get through Busio. And, and that was basically all they needed to then finish up that ace, finish up that dragon and the Baron. Yep, they are committed for Masu. They can't finish him off, and Jensen just goes crazy in the back. And there's a nice slow from the auto from Busio into the ulti. The binding, though, missed time, but he's going to get eaten up there by Isles either way, so it won't matter. Masu, though, crushes Rich, who is way out of positioning here, and XU now on the run, but he's got nowhere to go. Whippo still chasing after him. The Scatter of the Week from Dove, buying a little bit of time, but it will only buy so much as he's trying to run to this blast zone. He's trying to get away. Might actually be able to do it. I thought XU was going to go to him for sure. Whippo still unwilling to let him go, chasing after him, slowly chopping through him. Does get the kill as Jensen's is knocking down the inhibitor tower in the top lane. That was a 4v5 that FlyQuest are winning. Jensen not even needed as FlyQuest are looking nigh on unassailable at this point. All right, turret stand, no chance. Baron buff goes down. Tomo, Dove, and Isles, the resistance, trying to keep FlyQuest off. At least they're gonna keep their Nexus alive for now, but two inhibitors and the massive gold lead that has ballooned here off of the, the last five minutes for FlyQuest does seem like it will be inevitable here. Jensen, 6-0, he's got the fully stacked bounty. So from the point of view from Dignitas, at least you're still saying, hey, you know, dream scenario, obviously this is gonna be super difficult to deal, but we gotta do something about Jensen. Yep, yep, you gotta stay proactive, you gotta keep looking for those plays, but you touched on it earlier. 
Gold is only showing you, you know, what the item completions could be. And we can look at the item completions in both of the carry slots here. It's a full item advantage for Jensen, full item advantage, and more expensive items for Masu. So it's very problematic. You can see that the Koenig Rooker done now for Inspired. He has a Frozen Heart, you know, working towards another item. Three items going to be shortly finished up for Gwipo as he's working in towards that Spirit Visage. So very tough stuff here for Dignitas. Super's pushing in top, Super's coming in mid. It's gonna be up to them to try to problem solve, but really, you either have to hard engage right now or you have to go defend your Nexus and they're gonna take the third and hit. This is, this is a very difficult problem to solve and they're coming in. Yeah, they're gonna be looking for the engage now. Tomo does get caught by that Bard ulti. They're fighting on the turret, which might give them an opportunity. The deep water dive does connect on Masu, but it doesn't even matter. He ignores the Tom Kench. He flashes in on the carries, and Masu and Jensen ripping through the team. It's another triple for Jensen. 9-0 and 2 on the Tristana. FlyQuest will end the first round robin. Will end Super Week in sole possession of first place. Fly Quest, new year, new squad. They've gone through so much, so many changes, bringing the, the young bottom lane together with the veterans. I mean, it has just been so fun to actually watch this team's development. You know, for me, I, I did have quite a bit of confidence in the bot lane, you know, but I wasn't sure how quickly would they be able to get up to speed in the LCS? You know, would this team be looking this good, this fast, with a pretty much rookie bot lane? And the fact that this game, it wasn't a start to finish, FlyQuest are dominating. Yeah. This was, whoa, what is happening bottom lane? They're giving up 